It was already pitch black. I suddenly woke up and saw you were no longer by my side. I jumped up and desperately started looking for you everywhere. Coco? Coco! Where are you? No response. While I was walking around our camp, thousands of thoughts started running through my head. Was it a wild beast again? Someone trying to kidnap you? How could it be I hadn't even noticed? What a lame excuse for a bodyguard. Coco! Shit, maybe shouting is worse. If anyone has her, they'll know I'm getting close. I then decided to search for you in silence, just in case. Luckily, that night was a full moon and skies were clear, so the woods weren't completely dark. Once my eyes grew accustomed to the dark, I could see perfectly. Where the hell are you? I heard a sound all of a sudden. I bet it was you. Don't know why, but I was sure. Between relieved and nervous, I approached. Oh, there you are! Scare me like that again and I'll kick your butt! Among all the possibilities that crossed my mind at that second, finding you like that wasn't one, I'm certain. The moonlight illuminated the lake, and on its shore, you. Naked. Taking a bath. Um... Coco? Uh, ah! What are you doing here? What do you think? I was looking for you, you idiot! I woke up and saw you weren't there! Alright, you found me! Now please go back to sleep! I found myself incapable of looking away from you, not understanding why. Maybe because this was like those old tales in which a knight finds a nymph or something in this very same situation, and he ends up mesmerized by her beauty. I know I asked you to keep an eye on me, but not like this! Not when I'm naked! Uh, how was I supposed to know you felt like going for a midnight swim? Could you please stop ogling me already? I- I'm not ogling you, idiot! We're both the woman! You don't have anything I haven't seen before. I- I'm going back to camp. And I wasn't looking! I ran back to our camp and sat by the fire until you came and went to sleep without a word. I guess you didn't even want to look me in the eye after the shame I put you through. But I was surprised by how quickly you were able to catch some sleep. And I was still unable to stop looking at you. Look at her, sleeping like a log. And to think she was such a mess just a moment ago. Maybe I should take a relaxing bath as well. Seems to have worked for her. Curled up next to the bonfire, you were sleeping soundly, as if nothing had happened. Or maybe it was that nothing had happened. It was just an embarrassing situation. Nothing more. However, I was still restless unable to remove that beautiful image from my head. Why did seeing you naked cause that effect on me? Why was I still so nervous? Can't sleep a wink. What's wrong with me? Uh... You moved a little in your dreams and your blanket shifted away. I was, again, looking at your body from top to bottom. Then I noticed something that you were hiding under your clothes. I couldn't believe that. What the... 
What's this? My eyes didn't trick me. It was the relic. You had it on you. Who would have thought? Carrying something so valuable would only make you a target for bandits. Is that what you wanted to pay me with? Weren't you supposed to give me something even better? So I never lie, huh? Bullshit. I reached out. I had the relic at my fingertips. I could take it and go. Leave you to your fate. All my problems would disappear and I could pay off my debt and leave in peace. All I'd have to do is pick up that damn relic and get the hell out. So simple. You wouldn't even know until you woke up, and I'd be far, far away. That'd serve you right for trusting someone like me to babysit you. It'd all be over in a moment, this ridiculous journey. <sighs> ah, I'm too tired to start running now. I should try to get some rest. Better cover you up, too, while we're at it. Good night, Coco. Maybe sometimes life can be like those night tales.
Thank <laughs> you.
Well, I just turned 21 today, and it is not something that is served at the temple. Moreover, it is not something essential for living. Well, that ends today. We're going to celebrate your birthday. What? Fortunately, we were in Undira, the most prosperous city in the kingdom, and the only one in which I knew of a tavern where I could take you without anyone bothering us. People there knew me, and no bastard would have the guts to approach me, let alone someone with me. For their own sake, anyway. Hmm. I did not expect Ale to look this bad up close. It really does not look like something that should be consumed. Not with that color. I don't know how it is for little princesses like you, but commoners like me drink this instead of water. At least, this doesn't give you diarrhea. My parents made me drink it when I was a child. I see. So you drink this because your water is ridden with disease. In that case, I too shall drink. Bottoms up. And you drank the whole jug in one go. Hey, take it easy, princess. That stuff has a kick to it, you know. Ooh. You all right? This is not the first time I have drunk an alcoholic beverage, mind you. Well, I didn't see that coming. What, did you get tipsy in the temple to cope with your boring-ass life? What are you blathering about? We use ceremonial wine for many rituals. We do not get inebriated like sad drunkards. It is reserved for special occasions. I am still quite susceptible to it. Well, in the real world, that's what most people do. Drinking to kill time or drinking to forget, you know? Drown our sorrows and all that. So, what do you think of ale? It is much more bitter than I expected. Nothing like the sweetness of the wine we use in our ceremonies. I could discern a hint of ground ivy, berries, and ginger. Those are probably used as preservatives, and that is why this settles in your stomach better than water. Oh, look at the little princess. You're a beer buff already. Of course! I know a lot about plants, both medicinal herbs and regular ones, their effects and their taste. And enough with calling me princess. <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? Being together like this, just the two of us. This is what I used to do after a hard day's work. So stealing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So you're saying they'd make you drink this when you were a child? No wonder you turned out the way you did. <laughs> that ale must have gone straight to your head. What my parents gave me was small beer. That has almost no alcohol. They weren't that thoughtless, you know? But with the bandits, it was a different story. I see. You looked away for a second. No doubt that at that moment, you felt pity for me. And until then, I felt the same. But I wouldn't be who I am now without all those things I've lived through. And I'd have never met you. Shall we order another round? You bet! Until they kick us out! I lost track of time. And without knowing how, I was carrying you through the empty streets on the way to the inn. Which fortunately was a stone's throw away, because 
You were a dead weight. You weren't lying when you said you were not accustomed to drinking. You weren't even able to stand by yourself. So, how was it? Did you enjoy yourself, birthday girl? Truth be told, <laughs> it wasn't such a big deal. Well, you have to get used to its bitterness, but that's kind of the point. You'll get into it eventually. But of course, it will never be as fancy as the ceremonial wine of yours. I mean, I like the company better. That was fun. You had serious problems keeping yourself awake. But you looked as if you were making a huge effort to keep your dignity. I... I love you, Tama. I felt as if my heart skipped a beat. I hadn't heard those words in years. And I'd wanted to hear them for so long. But not in this way. Shut up, idiot. You're drunk.